You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Real Housewives of New Jersey After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424. 424- 256 1729. That's 424 256 1729. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Real Housewives of New Jersey After Show. Life is short. <laughs> I have no time for drama. I never throw the first punch. But I'm always a knockout. When times get tough, <laughs> you learn who your real friends are. I am a Vegas girl. You're so hot. I, I will call your bluff. <gasps> Shut up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, you need to like get your timing. Because the music kind of. Hello. <laughs> Hello, guys. It's, it seems like a really long time since we've seen you, but if you're tuning in, this is the after show for the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yeah! 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 Reunited. Reunited, and it feels so good. Uh, so last week, there was no new episode of The Housewives, so this week is the first time you're seeing us in what, like um, two weeks? Two weeks. Three yeah, maybe since we've all yeah. been together. Oh, three, three since weeks. we've all been together, so we're so happy to see you. We're happy to all be together. And before we start to break down the episode, I want to tell you guys that Bing is for doing, but you already know that, right? <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go around the table. Um, I'm Adrian Vero. Are we plugging our Twitter uh, Adrian Vero. And where can they find you, Adrian Vero? At Adrian underscore Has it been that Vero? long? It has. <laughs> Damn. Adrian underscore Vero. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Susan Hahn. You can find me on Twitter at It's Susan Hahn. Hey everyone, it's Giselle, and I'm always live tweeting and Facebooking at Giselle Ugardi or Facebook Giselle.Ugardi. Live, live, and I am Deanna Vaughn, and you can tweet me at GoToGirlTV, that's the number two. And it's time to dig into a new episode. So we are at episode 15. I know. Wow. I mean, but this has been kind of an extension with the whole camping trip. This it is has. Like the third episode that we This is well had. no, this is this is the second episode of the camping trip and actually next week we will have one more. Right. Mm-hmm. But um and there was that whole episode leading up to it with the counseling exactly. and planning. Exactly. So bas- figuring out the awkwardness. So Basically this trip is like three full episodes. Right. But it's fun because I think this episode I feel like it was very lighthearted. For the first time, we're seeing everybody having fun. There mm-hmm. really aren't any fights. There's not a lot of tension, which is rare considering yeah. like this whole season. You know what we've had to kind of catch up with. So, what did you guys think about this episode? Do you think that the fun and the frolicking was all real and sincere? I, d- I, I think for as much as they're complaining about the trip, as Wes was saying earlier, um, they're all getting along really well. Like really it's, it's well. Really nice to see all the couples are getting along. You have laughter going on. Um, a lot of just the good couples times. are really like, getting along. Long. Yeah, <laughs> very surprised. And in fact, I think the most surprising of them all is Teresa and her brother. They shared an RV. And remember, what two episodes or three episodes ago, the therapist was like, "No, right, I, bad I, idea. You, it's a bad idea. You shouldn't do it. You're only going to start trouble." But like they, oh, proved- <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, they proved him wrong. Yeah, I think it's been a good thing. Melissa even said it. She thinks it was the best decision that they could have made. Right. 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 So uh, I'm really glad that they dragged it out so many episodes yeah. because I think there was really content that we needed to see the behind the scenes, seeing them get along or seeing them, you know, act really ditzy or <laughs> learning how to surf and really coming down to earth, getting dirty in the canoes, all of that. I really appreciated. That I really appreciated took Vito's the time to flush it out. <laughs> mooning his asshole, his hairy <laughs> bear tattoo or whatever he called it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a little sad they didn't show it on television. Well, I have to say at first I'm like, oh, he's got a tattoo <laughs> on a bear ass. on his ass. But then I realized he was just being <laughs> facetious and it was just like, he has a big hairy ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I realized it was a joke. 
But I, at the end of the day, I just thought it was like we saw a lot of bonding. I think we've seen like the relationships that we hope we would have seen earlier in the season. Right. We finally got to see. We it did. Here. We saw them out of their element. You know, like M Melissa. You know, she's like, I'd rather be sitting here in my glitzy bathing suit. But that is their Jersey life. That's how they live, kind of back right. home. It's very. They go to events. They do right. fun things. And here, I mean, they don't even know what the Golden Gate Bridge is. They're I like, is it, why isn't it golden? Why, why isn't it gold? gold? Yeah, they're <laughs> stripped <It's> orange. <laughs> they're stripped down to their like bare necessities right now. Yes. So the, all they can do is kind of be with each other and they don't have their materialistic things to kind of guide them through or have take the attention away. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why we're seeing them surprisingly get along really well. Yeah. Right. It's cool. always like, we can't tweet for three days? Yeah. What? Right. <laughs> oh my god. I love how uh, the boys go to the uh, convenience store and they come back with like Bread. chicken powder and they're like, the women are like... <laughs> and a wiffle ball. Wiffle ball. Or bat. Yeah. They're like, what are we supposed to do with this? Kathy's but like, I love how they all bang out some delicious looking food. <sighs> I know. Oh, I was yeah. just saying, I want to go to an Italian meal. I'm going meal. to Adrian's. I know. Come to my house. house. Yes. <laughs> for Labor Day. Yeah. But, <laughs> but all in all, I think it was a good episode. I think it was lighthearted. I think we got to see a different side of everybody that we haven't seen in a long time. And that was a lot of fun. That mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. Right. But, of course, there was still a little bit of drama. You know, we wouldn't have the Real Housewives of New Jersey without just a teensy bit of drama. And that leads me to ask you, uh, ask you guys about Lauren. Now, we all know Lauren to be a little sensitive, especially when it a comes lot to of it her. sensitive. A lot mm -hmm. of it sensitive. Like annoyingly sensitive. Especially about her weight and about she competes with her brothers. brothers. She thinks that her parents favor her brothers over her. Do you think this whole outbreak that she had, do you think it was it Do you think it made sense like First of all, was she drinking? They were all drinking, right? They yeah. were all drinking. They were all drinking. I think that brought out a little bit of it as well. You know, she might have overreacted because of the alcohol. I don't know if she was drinking that. That's what I was asking. I don't know. No. Everybody they all, else They was. all were, but we don't know, I guess. I just think, you know. Uh, I mean, most of us have siblings here, and we see how Teresa acts out with Joe, and we see that she's super jealous about Melissa. And we, we know the 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 you know, the base of why she's so upset with Melissa is because she feels that maybe Joe abandoned her and now he's glorifying his wife, whereas he used to love his sister and his sister was number one in his life. I think with Lauren, it's it's a little weird. She seems really, she seems like, I don't know, she seems super jealous, like she needs to be in the mix. She mm -hmm. seems like she's really upset that they moved out and they live with Greg instead of her. It, and, and it's yeah. like truth or dare, that game. She yeah. was right. like, well. Yeah. That was actually a like, weird question. Yeah, she's like, tell me, like, truthfully, are we going to have a threesome for the rest of our life? It's like, you need no. to. No, she didn't say that. But <laughs> basically. Threesome, but yeah, she wanted to She know. wants to yeah. be them three for the rest of their lives. Right. And it's kind of weird. And, and I loved Albie's response. I think his response made sense. He said, you know what? No, I hope we're not. Because right. we grow. We change. We're adults. Yes. You know what I mean? So I don't know why she doesn't get that. I think her her level of insecurity stems from, like we said, more than just that one thing. With the Lindsay thing, I think it's that initially she wanted to move in with them, and they said that the only girl that they can have in their apartment is Dolores. The dog. They used a different word, mm -hmm. but they said Dolores. <laughs> the dog. Uh -huh. And Greg. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then there is also the level of overprotectivity as a sister, which I know I would be the same way. <laughs> I'm very overprotective. I think I'm probably more um, hard to get by than my parents as well. But then there's also the weight issue, and there's also being left out of the black water thing. And then Caroline, I think, explained it, and I'm glad that she admitted it, that she feels that she is at fault for the way that Lauren feels and that she isn't as favored or that she is left out. Of well, the, did you Caroline know? really admit that? She I don't kind, think she, well, you know what? She just made the comment, you know what? Poor Lauren, you know, the boys, they moved out and they got the black water. Lauren kind of got left by the wayside. Now she's feeling this. Well, it's not Lauren. poor Lauren. And it's I actually agree. speak louder than words. Caroline could say all she wants. She, Caroline does favor her boys. Well, okay, Bottom line. I'm going to back up for a second mm -hmm. because, okay, so the boys have black water, but Lauren has, has this cafes. whole cafe. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and her mom is, like, funding that. So right. I don't get where... This well, is coming I from, think just from bottom line, it's going to be a different dynamic that Caroline has with the boys than she does with Lauren. I Agreed. think Lauren Absolutely. takes it to heart because Lauren's the only girl, so she feels left out because she is treated differently, but that's also because a mother-son relationship is different than a mother-daughter. Right, but Albert, I see it her, with my own family. But I'm sure Albert, her father, treats her differently Absolutely. than he treats the boys. Right, and I right. think because we already established that Lauren is sensitive, we already established that she, you know, throw everything else into the mix about her weight and insecurities in, in general, she is going to feel left out at the situation in general. And it, and it also extends to a question where it's not just about 
okay, now we, f- we now we know where the insecurity really comes from. And I think it's it's really been shown to light where it comes from. But the question is whether it's justified and whether it's right and whether, you know, her perception is actually the reality. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you guys feel about, like, the whole tirade that Lauren had? Remember, she was just like, well, the boys say something, it's fine. But when I say something, blah, blah, blah. And then she right. locks She's- herself in the trailer. Everybody, including her mother, including her father, said, oh, Lauren's being an asshole. Lauren locked herself in. Let her stay there. What do you guys think about that? Well, she used the word vicious, that they're being vicious which towards was me. A, which too was... Too big of a word, I she's think. She's being melodramatic. Yeah. She locked herself in a in a RV. Like, get over yourself. You're camping. Like, <laughs> Well, and you're how old? Yeah, you're how old. And my thing is, why wouldn't you even want to live with your brothers? Like, isn't it time to, like, go and do your own thing and kind of venture yeah. out? Like, why... Do you want to be stuck to your brother's hips for I the rest like of your life? I just feel like it's so hard because, you, like, you made that you made a good comparison about Teresa and Joe, and then the Lauren and her brother thing. I think it's such a loyalty, and I, I mean, I speak to it because, like, I, I have the same thing with my family too. And it's, it's hard. Like, Italians are so loyal, and like, trust is such a big thing. So when you do bring an outsider, which would be a significant other, into the situation, it's like, well. Do you have loyalty to your family? Do you have loyalty to her? You know, it's that kind of like, uh, it's sh- that balance. You have to find it, and it's it need, you know, it doesn't need to be. You're not. It's not going to always be your siblings. It I'm, can't be. She was so pissed off that Albie walkie talkied her ass and was About like, "That's what Lindsay's know. moving in." But I mean. If she wasn't the way she was, maybe they would have an adult conversation and maybe he would be like, hey, guess what? I really like this girl. I don't know where it's going to go, but for right now, I'm digging her. She's moving in. You well, know? I- I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, well, Abby even made that comment. He goes, oh, my God. If my girlfriend was like her, like, we'd be broken up. You know what right. I mean? He he was made it that Albie comment. that made that comment? Albie yeah. or Chris. Yeah. I, but I think it was Albie. Because she was so disrespectful to Vito and she's like you know come get it yourself or because I think Vito was like hey can you go go, get a plate get a plate right Right. yeah Mm -hmm. but also the thing with that is I think she was offended by the fact that everybody knew except for her so she felt left out but she didn't know the situation that they found out by accident they found out because they overheard a conversation and they just found out so literally like two seconds before she found out the family found out right but she also didn't know that though so that's what I'm saying right that's why she got so upset yeah yeah so it's like the guys you know they know she's sensitive like maybe they should have gone it. And she heard it from they, Chris. They pick on her. Not they, even from Albie. They, they do pick absolutely on her. pick because on her. Because she's easy to pick on. I know. And that's what your brothers are supposed to do. They're <laughs> supposed they do. to pick yeah, on you. Yeah, that's you know? what they do. Yeah, she's just not tough enough to, to push through yeah. and deal with that. And there's also different ways that she could handle things. It's like you've been picked on for long enough. At what point are you going to stop caring about the little tiny digs or the parent, the, you know, the parent thing rather than getting so offended that her mom's like, oh, that's not nice. Be like, oh, come on, mom. Like, you know it's true rather than... Yeah, I'm gonna go lock myself in the RV. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, how many hands do we think that Lauren is too sensitive and she needs to like put her big girl panties on and just buck up? I mean, all of us. <laughs> all of us. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. just, well, I just have a little more sympathy with her. All of us, but that's just not who she is. Yeah. You know, and and also. I like the example of comparing it to the Teresa and Joe thing. At the same time, look at how close Caroline and Jacqueline are. And I'm a little confused as well because I guess Lauren's the strict one, but previously Lauren also said how she got so upset that she got so close to Albie's last girlfriend and mm-hmm. then they broke up. So that's well, also kind of interesting as to like where is, the Chelsea line is. But did she get close is. to Albie's girlfriend so that she can also be in the mix? Like when they go out, she good can point. always Maybe. be invited. Really good Not point. because she genuinely was like... Wanted to, but it like keeps her in the friendship. circle. Yeah, it keeps her in the circle. So that's a little... That's a good point. That's kind of weird for me. Mm. I mean, I don't have brothers. I have a sister, but I, I can't... I mean, you guys obviously have a different perspective on all of this. You know well, I have I mean? a brother, but it's just like... That's his business, you know? I mean, I've had my issues with, you know, certain girlfriends or past. But at the end of the day, it's his life. It's his love. It's his decision. You know what I mean? I don't mind as long as my parents don't favor her over me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) My brother can keep her entertained. My parents can be nice to her, spoil her, whatever. But But you're number one. As long as I'm number one, it's fine with me. As long as she's, like, the baby. Yeah. The honey boo boo. Oh, the honey boo boo child, child of the group. <laughs> oh. Well, I think now's a good time to uh, tell our fans about our wonderful affiliate program with Amazon.com. What mm-hmm. do you guys think? Yes, I, I just do. bought some stuff on Amazon. What'd you get, girl? I was like, I was about to make my purchase. I'm like, oh crap, I have to go through App- After Buzz TV. It oh. was uh, for a baby shower gift. 
Aww. And so I was like, purchase. I was like, hell no. I had to start Rewind. everything over, but it was so worth it. See, guys, and so easy, right? So easy. So easy. So let me tell you about this uh, affiliate program with Amazon.com. All you have to do, if you would normally make your purchase on Amazon.com, all we're asking you to do is make a quick little detour to AfterBuzz.com. You click on the Amazon affiliate border and you make your purchases that way. And what happens? We get a little kickback. It allows us to keep the shows free bring you lots of new shows, lots, lots of new things, guests in the studio, and it doesn't cost you anymore. Same mm -hmm. purchase, you get it the same way, same shipping, just a little detour. Mm -hmm. A little something. A little something. I really wanna get a like mixology type of a book or oh. like a drink book. Like for drinks? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because one thing that a lot of our commenters have been mentioning is that they wanna see us with champagne or bellinis oh. or cocktails rather than oh, a little Oh, you just wait. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, we, we will listen to your comments and we will bring that to you. That's very <laughs> yeah. easy. Yeah. Done and done. Done, done and, and done, done fam. <laughs> And so that's all we're asking you to do. Just don't forget about our Amazon affiliate program. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com, click on the Amazon affiliate border, and make your purchases that way. Okay, so are we done with Lauren? Uh, I think we're done yeah, with Lauren. Yeah. I think we're done ripping her apart. On? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say we're ripping her apart, but <laughs> I mean, I just, we kind of are. <laughs> no, she's she's we're being a objective. She's the sensitive. I'm sure bear. other people feel the same koala way. Koala bear. Yeah, she's a sensitive koala bear. Do you remember how upset she got? I By know. comparing her to Qual don't call her Koala Bear. Oh, she's gonna sorry. come and she's well, gonna come for you. I mean, now she's like skinny bitch. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> she's a she's a she's a tree that the Koala Bear was hugging. So it's now a koala <laughs> I don't know stick. what to call it. Stick. <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on. So um, another big part of this episode is that I think for the first time we got to see. Joe Judice and Joe Gorga actually kind of like bond and it mm -hmm. seemed like their relationship was kind of renewed, so to say. There was that one moment um, mm -hmm. where I think they were canoeing pee. and they went to go take a, you know, take a oh, pee. pee, pee. <laughs> and normally that's a moment where women go together, right. but like the two of them went together, they went to go pee and they went to go talk and bro it out. I thought and they were gonna start fighting. Did I you? did too at first, but then it was just, I don't know, I think that's their sense of humor and that's a relationship. Okay. They're both guys... very aggressive, and the, the way they speak, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of um, their issues, it was just miscommunication. Because you know, Judas is saying to Gorga, like you, you keep running your mouth to my sister, and I think that's where Judas is feeling like the the hate. It's like mm -hmm. keep your mouth shut, you know, like because my life code. comes back to me. Right? Yeah, it's man code, you know. It's like even though that's my sister, even though that's my wife, I mean, we're still men, we're still boys. And I right. mean, of course, Judas has known Gorga since he was like, yay big. Right. So I think that's where I think a lot of things, it was just miscommunication. Do you think it's hard for them to draw the line like between, you know, the one my one. wife yeah. and our relationship as brother-in-law? Of course. Mm -hmm. But I also think it has to do with Judas thinking that, like when he really thinks about it and talks about Gorga, he gets upset that he thinks Gorga copied. Like I think there's a lot of underlying things within himself that has nothing to do with the women necessarily mm -hmm. that bothers Judas. But I think that they're men and they can get over it when they're together, they have fun together. But when Judas sits back and, th and thinks about it, it's like, he gets annoyed that he caught right because well, he's, well he's annoyed because Gorga is succeeding in it and Judice is not and, and that just goes to show yeah when and they're not on top Teresa and Joe of course and you know then there's problems I so. mean you know it's it just like when you're so used to being on top and you kind of lose that spot I think it's hard for them it's a bitter yeah. pill for them to swallow yeah. especially if it's her little brother and and Judice thinks oh this is a little kid that I I mean I taught him the ropes right and now yeah. he's like lives in like this huge house they're they're doing well right and they're going through bankruptcy of course it's going to hit home but the other thing you is know? though too is that there's the other part of guy code where he's you know talking about him running his mouth and i think the reason why he's getting so upset with joe gorga is because i think he has something to hide Personally. Who? Joe Judice? Joe Judice, yeah. Well, we'll get saying, to that in yeah, we'll news and gossip, right. but he definitely has stuff to hide. Exactly. And I think if it was anything else, he maybe wouldn't care. Mm. But I, I think he's particularly self conscious because part of what he's saying might have some truth. Yeah. I definitely think he's cheating on Teresa. No I, doubt. Yeah, I mean, we're, sure. we're going to cover that a little right. later, but I definitely think he's cheating on Teresa. I think he has a lot to hide. He's got a lot of issues. And now I think because of this show, he can't control where all this information is coming mm -hmm. from. He can't control it. I'm surprised so. he's so trusting of others if he really is hiding something. But because trusting of, of who? That, you know, if, if let's just say hypothetically, 
if he is seeing someone else, if he has other women in his life, I'm surprised that he's being so stupid, regardless of the fact that he already has, you know, problems with the law, problems with his image on the show. No license. (laughs) Well, that do. um, That he's still, you know, being naive enough not to think that whoever he's affiliating with, whether it's dirty business, whether it's other women, that they aren't going to maybe put all of this... But you maybe know, he wants to get caught. Sell a story. Maybe. I, I get maybe what you're he saying. wants to get caught. Or what Adrian was saying earlier, this whole loyalty thing within within the Italian family, it's like you wouldn't think twice to be like, hey, you're not gonna say anything, right? Because yeah. we're we're just we have that unspoken code. So maybe that's what it is. So he thinks, well, you know, I mean, that's his brother in law. Yes. I mean, they might not be getting along so well right now, but they grew up together and maybe he just knows not to cross him. I, I don't know. Yeah. We don't know why he's acting the way he's acting. He's, well, he's acting a damn fool, but... Shit's going to hit the fan oh, once, it's, once it com- really comes to light that he's been cheating on Teresa with, with, with Joe Corga. There's going to be some real solid evidence, though, because Teresa will take him back in the meantime to keep a good image, I think. I don't think, I don't think Teresa's going to, like, cut it off. Your cup looks like it's going to fall over. Yeah, I just spilled water on my phone. Oh. <laughs> For all you after buzzers, we have a little mascot in the studio tonight. He's underneath the table. You can't see him. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, it's my dog, Jax. Jax, what do you think? You want to weigh in on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jax. Um, but, yeah, I definitely – no, but that, that's a good point you make, Giselle. He is being really stupid and trusting the wrong people because whoever he's cheating on, like, how – this woman, I'm sure she could make a shitload of money. Oh yeah, going any tabloid saying, "Well, yeah, you know, blah blah." And we're gonna see that next week. Mm-hmm. So that's maybe it's Pam G. <laughs> Funny enough, she's she's part of the news she and seems gossip the for type. tonight. <laughs> she's gross. She's but, is that I'm the sorry. one with the boobs that are far apart? Yeah. Okay. Buy one get one free. Buy one. <laughs> Wait, I get them confused all the time. Pam G is. Is is Albie's best G. friend? It's Kim. Oh, oh no, sorry, Kim. I'm okay. sorry. Um, Kim. Everyone is probably sorry. Kim G is Albie's best friend's mother, but Kim D owns Posh, which is now closed. Mm. Owned Posh, I should say. Right? Yeah, Kim D is a, is Kim D the ones with the double D's? Kim, right. Oh, exactly. Okay, so Kim then I meant D. to say Kim D, not Pam G. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still knew what you were talking about, which is really weird. Yeah, yeah um, we know what you were talking about. So interesting. Uh, you know what? Can I rewind for two seconds? Um, no. Were we <laughs> were we surprised at the reaction um, from the family about Lindsay moving in? Because I, I kind of feel like we glossed over that. Um, Don't want to gloss over anything for y'all. I think they glossed over it. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, I'm not okay. surprised because it really wasn't a big um, yeah, spectacle. They didn't make a big issue of it at all, and I was really surprised about I that. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a grown-ass man. I get it, you but know, remember in all. episodes previous, they right. were like, you know what, yeah. Albie, he needs to focus on yep. his job. This isn't the right thing, being in a relationship. So not only is he in a relationship, but this girl is moving in. I can see it coming to though, like later. Like I, I think, feel like that's the initial. They're going to blow it over. They're on vacation. Caroline's going to just right. hear, it, hear it one ear out the other, whatever. That's exactly when it, what When I'm something comes up, yeah, later, whether it's, you know, I guess we'll see. Well, I think that's something that will be dealt with later. It's just Sheep. so early in the relationship, and I feel like they're really conservative. Early. Wait, you guys. He has been dating her for over a year. We for, she has not been in the limelight. He just right. introduced her yeah. to the family, but he's been dating her for over a year. And how so old? She's not twenty six. Like yeah, he's 20, it doesn't matter. Old. You can know someone for. And you know, Caroline just mentioned that you know what, Albie falls hard. He gets really emotional. He gets attached. Well, you know, blah blah blah. But then remember, there were other people in the car. It wasn't just Caroline. It was the whole family. And, well, Chris, Larita, and Jacqueline were there. Which is why I think they didn't really go into it too right, much. Right, right. Because I think that it wasn't the appropriate time. It wasn't the appropriate time, um, and they overheard it. And so yeah. it was kind of like I think it was just what else can you do? Like I don't think Caroline's reaction. I think it was appropriate for the time being, but I right. don't think that I think she has a lot of oh, other thoughts. I'm I'm gonna, I was shocked. Yeah, yeah, I was like, wow, that's it. Yeah. See, yeah. I was okay. like, I was like, I can see something blown right. up later. One thing for I sure. think we also forgot to talk about, um, or maybe it was something that you guys didn't notice, but um, when the guys went to the convenience store, Joe Gorga bought Teresa a ring, a mm-hmm. mood ring, and mm-hmm. when he gave it to her, I don't know if you noticed, but she wasn't wearing her wedding ring. Like Joe Judice. and I oh. haven't seen her wedding oh. ring really at all. I've been trying to look out for it. Usually, her hands not even in the shot, but that time it really, really was, and she wasn't wearing her wedding. Weren't ring. they surf? Good. But at the well, I'm married, and I don't wear my wedding ring. Why? Uh-huh. Uh, especially when I cook, I don't. Why? I don't wear Why aren't my... you wearing your wedding ring right now? Because it's hot. 
or I don't want to lose it, or when hot? I'm cooking, I don't want to. It just it's a piece of jewelry. I don't know. I don't like. But you to wear get, other jewelry. But it doesn't but, have uh, prongs. But Teresa's so the type can't get in it. You know. You know what I mean. Okay. Teresa's the type though that like would you know she'd be like oh my diamonds however many carrots yeah. oh look at it sparkle watch it yeah <laughs> exactly. right but these are in front of their friends so it's like they've seen her ring it's like actually actually no I didn't even know my mom doesn't bring her um, good like wedding ring out on um, like camping like she's not gonna do that yeah and on vacation she'll wear it but she will wear I think she'll wear like a different band like a less expensive or something like that so maybe it was a something where they're on vacation they're in they're camping you know they're in RVs right so maybe in that sense like I don't know we'll have to look and see and if she wears it again throughout the rest of the camping trip it we'll would see. be interesting to go back and see if the other women are wearing their wedding rings mm. yeah because I mean if you're surfing, we might have you're a better argument yeah. yeah, you know, but yeah. good eye. Good but because eye. we're so like kind of looking out for these mm-hmm. kind of things oh, with them, yeah. you got to pick up on those things. Right. But at the same time, I think because of the situation, it might. Good call. We'll, we'll look and see if it's another. Yeah, yeah scene. for sure. Yeah. Okay, y'all. So it's time to talk about the real meat of this episode, which was at the very end where Teresa and Jacqueline finally kind of hash it out, mm-hmm. and they go into the RV. They're supposed to be getting dessert, apple pie, and fruit. But uh, Teresa actually, she initiates a conversation with Jacqueline about their relationship. Is the dog touching your leg? Was it apple pie and fruit or is my dog licking your feet? No. Because I know he likes feet. It was the, um, (laughs) I just got the picture in my head of Joe Gorgon knocking on the trailer asking if they had any fruit. (laughs) Oh, that was funny. Oh, yeah. The whole truth or dare game. With his pants around his ankles. With his pants around his ankles. And he actually got some vegetables. No, no, no. no, It's fine. What the hell is that? Your dog's bringing fleas? He does not have fleas. Okay. Joel Gorga is such a comedian. I love it. He's yeah. like, I feel like he's a black condom down. in his. Uh, <laughs> he's so cute. His wetsuit. He's like, I feel like so a black condom. Well, so like if he could, he'd be naked all the time. All the time. <laughs> Look how many times he was flashing a little Tarzan. Yeah. Oh, you know, man. yeah, a lot, a lot. But um, anyways, back to no, the um, yes. back to the the <laughs> confrontation of or like the, the yes. Talk so what Jacqueline. do we think about that? Are, I was actually really I was proud of Teresa for bringing it all up. Mm-hmm. I think it needed to be done. Mm-hmm. I think even though they're on vacation. Vacation, it was just kind of like the, the elephant in the room. So I'm glad that she brought it up. Mm-hmm. What do you guys See, think? See, I cringed a little bit with the way she approached it. I'm glad she brought it up. But I was immediately... Jacqueline, we already know we're sympathizing with her because of we know how Teresa is, especially with everybody else. Mm-hmm. Teresa came into it like playing the victim a little bit. And she was like, well, I didn't do anything. Like, you have to at least pro- approach someone with a little bit of of understanding and like take some credit for maybe well, what happened. She came into if, it like it was still Jacqueline's fault. That's well, how I if I need to interject on here because says. in that specific situation, Teresa didn't do anything. She came over to her friend's house and some they I had a magazine and they said you're going to jail. It's and she was like, first of all, bitch, if I was going to jail, I wouldn't be coming over here like let's have some wine. Having a leisure. I would be like, I gotta like leave the fucking country because I'm going to jail or something. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're not going to be like, oh, by the way... I'm going to jail for. I need you know to go get mean? another laser hair. But that removal. was the icing on the cake for a lot of other things going on. Right. So I think but if that was Teresa. As much as like she's really stubborn, at least I mean, when I'm going to go in any confrontation with somebody, or at least want to repair something, uh-huh. I'm going to admit or try to understand where they're coming from. So all I wanted to see was Teresa say, "Listen, I still think she's like, well, you know, I still think I'm right. Like I still feel like I was attacked, but um, and then kind of just lead into it. I feel like it was still like Jack that. and put her, her, her on the defense. Well, I get that, but at the same time, they have totally. Completely different views, views right? Yeah. On what they said that miscommunication. I looked at it the other way around, though. Is that mm-hmm. you know I can see how Teresa's like, oh, I did nothing wrong, but Jacqueline didn't defend that statement or defend that she did otherwise. You know, like it's not like Jacqueline said, well, actually you did this, or actually I felt as though you did this. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, I think that, again, miscommunication. Jacqueline could express herself saying, you know, I'm really hurt. I feel like, you know, you're not as open with me as I would like you to be. Instead of saying, like, she's giving a bad example. Like, you know, I thought we were friends. So are you or are you not going to jail? If someone said that to me, I'd be like, you need to back up I a know. little bit. I know. And, you know, Teresa, she's like, listen, if you and um, <laughs> something stinks over there. <laughs> There's a fly. <laughs> what is flies? I think it's, well, the dog's under here. No, I'm kidding. I'm, oh, <laughs> Jax. No, we love him. Um, Jaquisha. Jaquisha. <laughs> um, what were, what, what were we talking well, about? I, I have to say, <laughs> for the very first time, I was actually really on Teresa's side. Me too. I really was. For the first time, just out of all of this, I was on her side. Me too. Because she was just like, you know what? Like, I didn't do anything. And she's right. Like, that whole confrontation, mm-hmm. she thought she was having a conversation with Jacqueline. Then oh. next thing you know, 
know. Caroline pops up. <laughs> Caroline pops up and yeah, she gets ambushed. So I, I, I really, I was on her side. I know, I know. I think I that, that for me, we, I had seen so much, so much other drama that for me that was like, like I said, the icing on the cake. And I think that it was much more than that. So as Teresa, she knows that Jacqueline was getting upset with her, and maybe not. And even though that whole jail thing, maybe Jacqueline wasn't right in coming and saying that because mm -hmm. I think we kind of all agreed that that was a little. She was being ambushed. Jacqueline still needs to under, or Teresa needs to understand that Jacqueline is still hurt as a friend and they just they need to talk about it regardless so if you're I gonna talk that. about it you can't come into it blaming people I, that was the only thing i kind of saw and wish that they she knows jacqueline's sensitive teresa's a hard she's a bull you know i you think know? teresa wasn't blaming anything i think teresa was like Confused. well actually yes you she did feel am why did why the hell did caroline have to come over and decide that moment that she also wants to end her friendship with Teresa. Because it's called TV. Like, that yeah. shit could have been done the well, next no. day. And you know Caroline what I mean? And had already decided beforehand. And, and she, she could, right. But yeah. she didn't have to do it at that point. Like, yeah. she's already dealing with the the hurt with Jacqueline. And then here comes Caroline saying, oh, by the way, I don't want to be friends with you either. It's like, it's who wouldn't feel it be ambushed, you know? Yeah. And, well, anyway, so... For Teresa, she doesn't want to pry into other people's business. And this is where I relate with Teresa. It's like, hey, I'm here for you, but that's I'm not going to call you every day and be like, do you want to talk? Do you want to tell right. me something? It's like, you know my number, and I'm here for you. You call me, I will come rushing over with a bottle of wine, a box of chocolate, you know, a box of tissues, whatever we need to get through. But I'm not going to be all up in your business. Whereas Jacqueline is. And she's like, well, to me, it's it, that means I, they've it's got caring. Two, they've got two definitions of two friendship. Different that that was her big comment. Right. Yeah. I, I and it's kind of like back to what I was saying before about how Jacqueline could have also like she kind of victimizes herself a little too much too because part of Jacqueline's yeah. argument for like why she is upset with Teresa is because she feels that a lot of the times when Teresa is opening up or isn't that she's being dishonest about things like lying about things one minute she'll hear from Joe or Melissa that Teresa hasn't reached out or something and then Teresa will say oh I reached out blah 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 blah. Well, rather than just letting you tell the story or letting her tell the story, why not be like, well, Call hold her on out. a second. Why, Melissa and Joe said this. Like, why is that? And she just kind of, like, sits there and then just lets it all build up yeah. that Teresa's lying, 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 where she could get the story correct right away. And so in that way, I feel that Jacqueline is a little bit at fault. And Teresa made a good point. You know, every time I tweet, every time I have an interview, am I supposed to tell you this is right. what I said? Right. This is, you know... It, so that's why it's it is a little bit that both are at fault, Listen. but I do wish that Teresa would have at least apologized yeah. versus you know being completely guilt free well, or at least asked, what did I do? And I think it, I think it also what you just summed up is that there really is no right or wrong. I guess I think it's just a miscommunication and a lang like they said a language barrier like they can't well, get through to each other. At the, I mean, they're on the complete opposite of the spectrum. They're New polar Jersey opposites. Is right. English. But yet they were friends for 15 years. Right. You know. But they're polar opposites. They're on complete different ends of the spectrum. And it, it, it works. It, well, it did work until I feel like a lot of people stir the pot, i.e. Caroline, yeah. you know, or, or Kathy, which I'll get to Kathy in a minute, you know, but I feel like a lot of people <laughs> stir the pot here. And it's just, it's at the end of the day, it's, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, they all have their own families, and there are certain things that you don't want to reveal to your friends, especially on national television. She has four girls. That's her first priority. I don't think it's even her husband. It's her four girls, and then maybe, you know, keep saving face, mm -hmm. you know, for Joe. And, you know, Jacqueline, she has her family. She has her kids. She has a crazy daughter that she needs to, to think of. I mean, mm -hmm. this should be, like, the last thing on on their menu, right? You know, mm -hmm. being hurt that you, you're not telling me everything. Do, do do the others stir the pot, or do you think it's simply that like a situational production? I think they all stir the pot. I think they all stir the pot. Them. Do um, we? I have a question for you guys. Do we think that Jacqueline is too sensitive, kind of like Lauren? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, she is. Okay. She wears her heart on her sleeve, and she yeah. wants everyone to like her. I think mm -hmm. she's and sweet. She, she's, she's, a she's a people pleaser. Yeah, and she's insecure in a lot but of she's ways. Super we saw, insecure. you know, she has body. Yeah, issues. she didn't want to get in, a, in the wetsuit. Oh, <laughs> and her butt looked good. She is got the her best body. Wait, I don't get, she has an awesome Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yeah. And she didn't want to get Like she has an amazing body. I mean, Jacqueline. I, don't, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm so glad that they hugged it out. I'm really happy. I don't know how long it's going to last, we'll but I'm see. glad that they hugged it out. Yeah. Well, here's the next issue. 
Caroline makes another one of her predictions. Basically, she says, "Oh, well, we're going to see how long this lasts." I still She's think Teresa. Get I still think Teresa's going to hurt Jacqueline. What do we think about that? Because the last big prediction that Caroline had, you know, that was a big deal. You know, that she said that she thought that Joe was going to go to jail. Teresa was going to be a single mom, have to raise her kids. So, what do we think about this prediction? Caroline is mama bird all the time. I think she just needs to like go and have her glass of Chardonnay and just be like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm. Here here for you were family sister-in-law but that's it that's as far as you go you don't you don't chew you don't need to chew her food for her like she's fine you know what i mean With yeah. <laughs> she'll make her own decision whether it's wrong or right and i think that she should just be like yeah we're sisters sister-in-laws i'm here for you but that's it yeah with caroline you always start off at least at a zero you know, it's, it's yeah. she never necessarily thinks of someone all of a sudden, well, I'm sure they're going to be great. It's always a zero. Otherwise, if she knows you already, for example, Teresa, she's at like a negative 10 right now. Yeah. She's going to sit there for a while. So she's going to think of Teresa as a negative 10 until she proves otherwise. She's going to look for the bat. She's going to be skeptical. She's going to be protective of her family. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way that she is. She's the mama beast sometimes. Well, <laughs> well once, we, once we start to talk about the predictions, she might be right. She might be right. This next episode, that's when we, you know, I think it's the last leg of this trip and we see a lot more unfold. Uh, I think they have a birthday party for Caroline. And um, I don't know, maybe it's time to talk about that. Is it yeah, time let's to talk go. about that? After Buzz TV News. Oh, okay. Well, news. We'll do news first. Okay, so this is actually pretty relevant. So, um, well, we're going to talk about this a little later in scenes for the next, but... Um, Basically, it's saying that Real Housewives of New Jersey's Caroline Manzo has already predicted the demise of co-star Teresa and Juicy Joe Judice's already troubled marriage. And on an upcoming episode of the reality series, which is going to be next week, mm -hmm. it only becomes more clear that the rumors that he was cheating on her are very much based on fact. So, um... Oh, here, let me read this. According to reports, Joe gets up in the middle of a dinner party to take a phone call. He asserts to be work-related, but he, as he's proved time and time again, honesty is not his strongest attribute. And that's actually something we see in the predictions. Thanks to his mic pack, he's going to have a fun time trying to explain this away. So we actually see this in... Um, <laughs> we actually see this in predictions that he calls... He, he takes a phone call. He walks away from this dinner... And he says, oh, that's that's my, my bitch, bitch wife. wife. And then he also calls her, I see you next Tuesday. Mm -mm. See you next Tuesday. For Where all you this? people who aren't in the U.S., it's see you next Tuesday. <laughs> hell to the now. Yeah. That's, that's a hell to the now. Yeah. Um, and so essentially, basically, what what the blogs are starting to you know predict about this episode is that he was talking to his mistress. He wasn't uh, talking to a business yeah. associate, and Teresa comes up. Or plural. Mistresses. Mistresses. Who knows? Who knows? Misters? I don't um, know. <laughs> so that brings me back to Caroline's original, you know, predictions from a couple episodes ago mm -hmm. um, about how, you know, their marriage is going to, you know, fall apart and he's cheating. Maybe she knew something that we didn't. What okay. Do and think? if she did, then, you know what? Screw her. That's just horrible. Well, you think it's horrible that she's talking about that it? That she's or talking what? about it and she's not, you know, not listen she she still cares for for teresa you know I, I and i know so. that they don't want to maybe have tea together every day but i think she cares for her Definitely as another human being and as a woman mm -hmm. and if she knew about it it just shows a lot about her character saying like haha guess what well, i think we I, you all know? yeah no i know i just i think we seem to forget like there's a reason why everyone hated teresa like two episodes ago you know like i feel like teresa and she does that because she is such a kind of funny mm -hmm. likable Ah, can I even say likable person? I don't know. Like when you see her, you kind of just you forget all the things that she's done, and she did a lot of crap this I, season. Yeah, she did a lot so of I crap. Think I can understand, especially to Caroline. I mean, to Caroline took it that way, and Teresa's just that's her personality to not you know own up to it and didn't right. apologize for that cookbook thing, and it really bothered Caroline. And as a friend, if you can't at least agree to disagree, right? Um, it's gonna be hard to get over. And like you said, yeah. negative ten. She's at she's that's where she is. They're not even at civil at this point. They're not even speaking. No, they are. When her foot was hurting, Caroline's, was Caroline was the one who was said, why don't you put yeah. ice on well, it? Well, that's the small talk. It, that's yeah. just being I don't think she courteous to a human being. You know what I mean? I think the way Caroline's looking at it is if, if she does know something, and granted we don't know for sure, but if she does know something, I think she's assuming that the truth will come out. It's, it's you know, inevitable. And... 
let's think about this for a second. If Caroline were to pull Teresa aside and say, your husband's having right. an affair, how would Teresa react she to that? Flip. What she kind flip of out. what kind of evidence would Caroline have other than maybe hearsay and gossip? Yep. Right. You know, otherwise And Teresa would cut Caroline out before Caroline could even cut Teresa. Right. right. Okay. And if Caroline did come with evidence, then Teresa would be like, Oh, well, you're spying on me yep. now. Yeah. So right. that's why it's really difficult to find that fine line of whether she's being a good friend or a good person. There's just it's it's really hard with Teresa and Caroline for that matter. Yeah. I have I have a question for you guys. Do you guys think that like Women's intuition that Teresa actually knows that her husband's cheating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. And for she's, sure. she's the fact that face. she's got four children, she's choosing not to go down the road of divorce. Yeah, and I do think I, I think she really loves Joe. I think that out that's sight, really hard. Mind. Maybe. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm still number one. I have his kids. He has to. She's the. She's the. She makes the money in the family. She has the. Mm -hmm. You know, the stardom. They are, have stardom together. It'd be really hard for them to actually part ways. So she obviously would want to make it happen with him. And I think she really does love, she and loves him. And Joe's the person who she can't stand up to. Right. Whatever he right. says, whatever, got, absolutely. Right. whatever he says, she believes it. I can't right. Nobody else can say that. She eats it up. Yeah. No, he, Anybody else, she'd be like, what is, what, what's the impression you always do? The, the what? <laughs> <laughs> the what? <laughs> Before she flips the table. <laughs> Prostitution <laughs> whore! That one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad. Uh, well, geez. I just, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I mean, you know, marriage is hard, and especially when you put kids into the mix, and I don't envy her at all. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, but, on her blog, she's going to defend Joe until the cows come home. So I mean, we we gotta really see next week's next week's episode, and yeah. I cannot wait. I know, I know. Me too. And uh, did you guys catch that clip where um, somebody was doing the nasty in the vineyard? <laughs> oh, I think it was uh, Melissa and Joe. Okay, I think. I think. Uh, but one one more bit of gossip. I so hope it's Kathy, <laughs> Kathy and Rich, they do like doing the nasty one. Yeah. Okay. She's back. I'm just reading what's on the paper. So Kim G has been shunned from Real Housewives of New Jersey after she made enemies with all of the women on the show. However, much like a roach after a nuclear war, who wrote this? Kim crawled her way back into our vision by doing the one thing she does best. Talking some shiznit. I'm going to guess Perez. So, yes. <laughs> the reality show Want to Be Told reports that Teresa Judice's husband's Juicy Joe Judice will be going to jail after Ooh. his trial, and so will Teresa. Why? Because she's wow. like an accessory? Like do we think this is true? That's the question. What? Well, the trial's not over, so. <laughs> well, I want to know how she's going to get her hands on some, you know, gossip like this. That is <laughs> a fly on steroids He's in the studio, <laughs> and it's been driving us nuts. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Like, what do we think about? I Maybe think she just wants attention. Yeah, I think because she, if the trial's not she over, was trying she to be the sixth housewife, and it never happened. It never happened. Never happened. Sorry, home slice. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Are we ready? I mean, for who never knows? I mean, no, no one knows. Uh, Martha Stewart went to, went to jail. Who are they to not go to jail? You know what I mean? True. Martha Stewart did go to jail, and now she's like bigger and better than ever. So. so maybe that's what they need to do. See what happens. We'll see. Time the, will tell. For the sake of those poor girls who are going to be the biggest divas, train wrecks, oh, biggest ever. divas. They're going to get their own show. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. They'll be all right. All right. It's time for some predictions for next week. <laughs> I miss the commercial, you guys. You miss it? You miss Willie Bear? Kinda. Aww. All right, so we already started to bring up predictions for next <laughs> oh my week. God. I looked at my head. <laughs> the fly oh landed God. on Deanna's no head. Way. Uh, so for next week, um, a couple things. So first off, someone is having doing the dirty deed in the vineyard, and I love it. Uh, another prediction for next week is. Uh, oh my gosh, I just had a brain freeze. You guys help <laughs> me out. Alcohol is flowing. Uh, the alcohol is flowing. Oh, Joe Judice is on his cell phone. Oh, oh yes, and oh, yes. Well, yes, that yes. And, and Kathy, who's stirring the pot with Kathy? Like, so Teresa's making an effort with Melissa, but someone brings up, but is she making an effort with you? It's like, you know, did you guys catch that? I, I think um, it was Caroline. 
Mm. Caroline, she said that during this episode, I believe. Yeah, she she said in the next episode, she goes, you know, I see Teresa is making a real effort with Melissa, but is she making an effort an with effort you? effort with her cousin. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Wait, okay, Caroline said this to Kathy? Right, and oh, then okay. so when they were making a toast, Teresa says, you know, I, I want to thank my brother and Melissa or something, and then they left Kathy completely out. And again, someone's stirring the pot, so I don't know if there's going to be drama with Kathy now. Well, and, and then, then there's the fake toast. The fake toast, and then is Caroline's prediction true about, you know, Teresa basically hurting Jacqueline? Because there's the toast, and she mentions other people, but she doesn't mention her friendship with Jacqueline. And I think yeah. that's kind of getting back to Caroline's prediction that, mark my words, Teresa's going to come back and hurt Jacqueline. So what do we think? Do we think that's really going to happen? Is there makeup for real, or what's no, happening? No, of course it's not, because they're not friends to date. So True. I yeah. think that it's just time. a matter of time before we see it play out mm. um, and actually see the friendship, you know, crumble even more. Yeah. I also want to see what what is it about the toast? Because if she's going to make a toast and address absolutely every single person who she hurt, then it's going to be the Teresa apology toast, and that's kind of awkward for a camping trip. Mm. I agree. I don't – oh, there's that nasty fly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, of course, we get this whole phone call interruption from Joe that's at this what dinner. That's I'm most looking forward I to. I can't wait I to cannot, see what that's about. Yeah, that's exciting. I cannot that. wait. Oh, I here comes my bitch two, wife, yeah. you know? I, ooh. Yes. I mean – And then just per this, you know, gossip that I was reading, it said the mic packs don't lie. So whatever he was saying, it was all caught on his mic pack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything. You can't Everything. say – you can't blame editing for that one. And I hope then, they're not going to do, like, a quick two-minute thing and they really – flush it out. Well, it even said that, let's see here, we don't know too many people who answer professional phone calls with, hi baby. Hey baby. So, hi. he's not talking to anybody from work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He needs to get booted out like right, mm -hmm. like yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Toot it and boot it. <laughs> <laughs> did you, guys, right, did you guys, guys catch us on Fox LA, yeah. by the way? Did you guys see the little segment I with uh, After Buzz TV I on did. Fox LA? Where can, no. It was amazing. I didn't we see did it. like they did this whole little segment about After Buzz TV. It's, probably, it's online, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll okay. send it to you. And our favorite um, fan, Adrian. Oh yeah, yeah, he was all over the Twitter really? page. Yeah. Oh, so right. that was well, Adrian was, at Watchtower. I mean, he's such a dedicated fan. Like, Thank love you, Adrian. Him. So we I'm love really, you. Really glad that he yeah. was Shout mentioned. Out. Shout out. Well, guys, that's that's another show. That's another uh, After Buzz recap for the Real House of, of New Jersey. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, check us out next week for more recap, more news, more gossip, more predictions, more us. And I'll go around the table. And where are you going to yeah, well, find um, you? You can find me at Adrian underscore Vero on Instagram and on Twitter. And I just covered uh, the Harold Pump Foundation, which is a really fun event, fun charity event. Um, and it's on After Buzz TV's website. So you can look there and you can look on my Twitter for all the coverage. Woo! Woo and I'm Susan Hahn. I'm the girl who rocks Louboutins and drinks a 40 out of a brown paper bag. I'm the girl who's always going to keep it real one bitch at a time. Please follow me on Twitter. Ew! Sorry. At It's Susan Hahn. <laughs> Can you not kill a fly? I know, right? <laughs> Um, and Fly I will guts. see you next week. It's Giselle. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Giselle Ugardi. You, have, you guys have any fun stuff happening? What's going on? Anything I'm going to fun? Napa. I'm going to Napa for your birthday weekend. Yeah. I actually just uploaded a YouTube video, a makeup okay. tutorial, Taylor Swift, a cover girl tutorial for my blondies out there, Smoky Eyes. And I so, saw cover girl yeah. gave you a shout they out. They gave me a shout out. So youtube.com slash sprinting stilettos TV. Very nice. And I am Deanna Vaughn. You guys can catch me uh, on Twitter at GoToGirlTV. That's G-O, the number two, Girl TV. And you can find me on GoToGirlTV.com, giving you lots of fun advice on how to live a fabulous life and keep some money in your pocket and uh i guess we'll see you guys next week Thanks. Bye. Bye. from bing.com executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire AfterBuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.